You write of the importance of sociolinguists making publicly available their audio recordings of people from all walks of life. Why do you think this is important? Well, I think it's simple because we have hundreds of recordings, if not thousands, that we use mainly to investigate um, the quality of the speech of people. But we don't, you know, we don't simply say, uh, I want you to speak so that, you know, I get the recording of your speech. Um, we asked them questions about what it was like growing up and what kind of jobs they did, how they met the, the woman they, they married or not, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, but they often contain information that's very valuable for historians, for students of culture, and other areas of academic or policy interests. Um, typically, then, social linguists, when they die or pass on, uh, they um, presumably somebody else in the family just throws out all these old recordings, especially if they're old reel-to-reel -reel recordings or cassette recordings. They probably don't, don't even know what that's what that's exactly. all about, you know. <laughs> um, so I'm currently trying to donate a lot of my recordings to the corpus of African American language, Coral, and to Stanford, um, on condition that they would make them publicly available um, to to others, you know. And of course, you have to have signed releases uh, when you've done the recordings. So I think it's very, very important that these records not just die when we do. Um, In your book, you say that loving languages or dialects is not enough. We need to also find ways to use linguistics to make a positive difference in the world. How can we do that, and what impact would it have? Well, I, I talk about this issue in Chapter 11, um, but also, um, to some extent, in the epilogue to my book, where I draw on Cornel West's um, distinction between public and private love. So he says that justice is what love looks like in public, just like tenderness is what look, love looks like in, in private. So I, I also say in Chapter 11 that the need for positive intervention on behalf of the community is especially great because Black people face discrimination in almost every area of life, when they're conquering police, uh, when they go to court, when they apply for jobs and apartments, when they seek health care or education, and more. And in almost every case, the discrimination is worse when people speak Black talk. So, for instance, one example that Cherise King, my former student, and I documented in an award-winning article in uh, 2016 in Language, the Journal of the Linguistic Society of America, we showed that Rachel Jantel's testimony in the trial of George Zimmerman for the killing of Trayvon Martin was totally disregarded because of a strong African-American English uh, use. It was partly not understood by Jews, or it was interpreted as less credible, or it was simply disparaged by everyone who, who wrote about her. So I also discuss how I use various kinds of evidence to show that I'm good uh, meant no thanks. Um, this was, came up in a case I was asked to provide a written deposition on, um, where a black woman on the bus, she and her sister um, were asked by a drug enforcement uh, agent whether he could do a body search of her. And her sister agreed, but she said, I'm good. Uh, and he said he interpreted that to mean, yes, you could. And he did a, uh, a body search of her from uh, some drugs. But I showed from a long analysis of uh, crosswords and um, uh, uh, the corpus of contemporary American English and so on, that overwhelmingly <coughs> I'm good, which is not itself black English, uh, but vernacular uh, uh, colloquial English meant no thanks. Um, you know, somebody offers you a drink and you say, I'm good. It doesn't usually mean yes. <laughs> it means no. Mm -hmm. And so um, her sentence was reduced from a potential 10 years to two. So as I concluded, 
Love is not love if it does nothing to enhance the lives of those we love or the community members who speak the languages we love. Now, others, including Bill Bob and John Bob, my colleagues, um, have made similar contributions to improving the education of black people. And in a book I showed you earlier, what led you before, was also an effort um, in that uh, regard. Also, in a very different example, I was one of a group of linguists and other scientists at Stanford who, in 2020, showed that Amazon, Apple, Google, IBM, and Microsoft made, on average, twice as many errors in the automatic speech recognition of black speakers as they did with white speakers. And several of those companies are now trying to improve their performance in that respect. 